Yes, uh, good, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and uh, thank you for joining us. So uh, this is the uh, CCCM and HLP Working Group, and um, especially welcome to you if you're joining us as part of the Humanitarian Networks and Partnership Week. It's really good to have you here. If you're able and would like to just put your camera on to say hello, it's always lovely to see uh, faces and um, if you can't, I totally understand, but it'd be lovely just to say hello and uh, welcome you here. Um, so yeah, it's good to good to have you with us. <laughs> this enthusiastic waving, it's excellent. Um, thank you. Um, yeah, well, so thanks so much for joining us. So this, um, this working group has uh, uh, sort of started just towards the end of December, uh, sort of in 2020, and um, it's about trying to share resources and ideas around HLP and, and uh, cluster, um, the cluster for sort of camp management, camp coordination and, and, and where there's crossover and there's things we can learn from each other and, and you know, to bring together sort of ideas around tools and resources and, and just to try and start a community of practice really to, to, to sort of have, have people sharing their experiences. Um, I thought it'd be interesting just to um, initially start with just to get a quick sense of where people are at. So, um, I'm going to just drop a, a link in the chat to just a, a really quick uh, Mentimeter um, uh, a sort of slide where you can just pin on the map where you're joining us from today, because I thought it would be quite interesting to uh, to just to sh see that really, because um, I know there are people from uh, all over the place that I, I believe will be joining us. So um, yeah, I thought that'd be quite interesting to see. And um, if you're able to, Go on. So you go to menti.com and then you use that code 9226287 and, and that should allow you to um, sign in. Let me know if there's any problems um, with that. Um, yes, so um, one of the things wanted to do today is, uh, is not only welcome you all to the group and uh, say thanks for being here, but is also just to um, introduce um, Abire Lopez, who is, is going to also be uh, co-convening this group along with myself and Juan. Um, Ibire, I wonder if you would like to just introduce yourself briefly and say a little bit about your, yeah, your sort of interest in this work and, and some of your, your background. I'm sure a lot of people know you, but some may not. Yeah, thanks, Jim. Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Ibire Lopez. I'm the HOP advisor to the Global Shelter Cluster. And um, the idea uh, to form this group was to, uh, like you mentioned, to try to understand and, and try to identify the issues that are in that, that intersect between, between uh, CCCM and HRP. And my interest in this is uh, because there are so many of these issues that intersect as well with, um, with shelter, with shelter programming and, and shelter operations. Um, we we want to identify them and 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 see how we can how we we can address them and and discuss better ways to address them. So um, I think it's going to be very very interesting and 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 hopefully we'll have enough material to uh, get this uh, working group uh, moving forward and and um, and producing something with practical um, uh, use for for all of us. Uh, but yeah, so thanks for introducing me and I'll, I'll be reconvening the, some of the, of the next uh, meetings of this group. Great, thank you, Abire. Really good to have you with us. And um, yeah, I'll just um, share briefly again the map just so you can see we have people joining from uh, all over uh, the globe. So thank you for those of whom this is either very early or, or very late. Really appreciate you being with us. Um, yeah, I just wanted to get a sense of that kind of the the interest in this intersection across the globe and also just the different resources and experiences we will be able to draw on in this group, which feels really encouraging and um, yeah, something that is yeah really gonna be a positive thing. So thanks for being here. Um, just a couple of quick comments uh, as is typical for Zoom etiquette. I'm sure you're all well aware of these things now, but please feel free to ask questions in the chat. Um, if you want to raise your hand at any point you can do. Um, Juan's gonna talk us through the, the agenda in a moment, but if um, 
yeah, if, if and there is plenty of time built in for discussion this today. Um, but if you do want to raise questions, then please put them in the chat and we will come to them. Uh, yeah, all the things as usual, you know, if, if you're not speaking, please, you can mute. That would be great. And and this and if you do uh, take the floor and speak later, please do introduce yourselves and continue to introduce yourselves in the chat. That would be great. And if you have joined this meeting because your invite has been forwarded um, or you weren't on the original mailing list, please also do add your email in the in the chat and we'll make sure we add you onto the list for the future meetings uh, just in case we we might have missed you. So um, yes, without any further ado, over to uh, Juan who will just uh, talk us a little bit through the agenda. Thank you so much, Jim. Um, if any of you were part of the first working group meeting, which we held at the end of last year, um, we launched a call for submission of resources and tools. And um, um, for some of you who may have been working on HLP issues um, related to camp and camp like settings before, um, we have received a number of examples that were shared from um, like Iraq, Somalia, we have Syria, Burkina Faso, Afghanistan, Ethiopia, and Libya. So thank you very much for those who've shared um, your resources, but also to talk to us through some of the examples that were put in. So when we plan this meeting, we feel like it would be really good to look, take a deeper dive into some of the examples that were shared. So we're very kindly um, joined by colleagues from Iraq and Somalia. Uh, for today's session, we're gonna start off um, with presentation from those in Somalia, um, and that's Ben Corner, and we have Elena uh, Valentini as well. Um, I'm sure they'll introduce yourself uh, when they're presenting. Then we're gonna be talking to Kate Holland, uh, Muslim Kasimi, and Marianne Gabo uh, from Iraq Mission and, and Clusters. Um, so we'll have those two short presentations, and then we'll open up the the discussion for Q&A sessions with, um, with the presenters. And, and I hope that those um, HLP colleagues on the call, you know, please also feel free to chip in and, and share with us some of the, the examples and, um, um, or experience or advice that you may have. Um, and that's it. I mean, it's gonna be pretty simple agenda and we hope that, um, you know, please feel free to engage and put in your questions or, you know, put on your mic and ask the questions after the presentations. So without further ado, I'm gonna hand over to Elena and Ben um, to take us through the discussions and, and collaborations in Somalia. All right, great. Thank you so much, Juan. Um, so as Juan mentioned, my name is Ben. I'm the CCCM Cluster Co-Coordinator for Somalia. Um, and today I will be discussing some joint eviction prevention and response activities carried out by Somalia HLP partners and CCCM agencies. Um, so just to provide some background related to the Somalia IDP context, uh, there are roughly 2,400 IDP sites within the country with virtually all IDP sites being spontaneously settled without proper site planning. Uh, and this has resulted in um, over 85% of all IDP sites uh, being precariously settled on private land where the threat of eviction is uh, ever looming. Um, due to the large number of IDP sites in the country, it's difficult to capture critical HLP data from IDP sites in addition to other aspects of CCCM data as well. So in early 2020, the CCCM cluster and HLP AOR commenced a joint activity of eviction data collection and mapping for IDP sites in Somalia. And in practice, this occurs with CCCM partners gathering key eviction related data from the site level with this activity um, incorporated within the clusters standardized service map of IDP sites. Uh, and these updates in eviction risk data and severity scoring, um, which measures the uh, threat of eviction uh, are also updated monthly as well. I'm just going to show you the service map. 
All right, so I'm now just showing the template that is used to capture this eviction risk data from IDP sites. Um, so eviction risk data categories that are captured monthly include um, critical data such as the landowner's contact information, uh, tenure type, start or end dates of agreement, uh, and eviction risk score as well. And this information is gathered by CCCM partners sent to the national cluster where the cluster then compiles this data for each district, region, and states. Uh, and then the cluster sends this data directly to the national and regional HLP focal points across the country. Um, so CCCM partners receive two refresher trainings per year uh, with support from the HLP HOR coordinator or uh, the HLP program coordinator from NRC. And this just ensures that CCCM staff are aware of how to collect the eviction severity uh, criteria, which is an important facet to the um, eviction data that's collected monthly. All right, uh, so to further corroborate this collected data, uh, HLP partners contribute to a biannual site verification activity, which is led by CCCM partners. Uh, with this activity allowing for partners from all different types of sectors, such as protection, shelter, and HLP, uh, in addition to incorporating local authorities. Um, and the idea is to really verify the functioning IDP sites that exist in a certain district or region, and to also have joint ownership of this important site level data. So the data that is collected from the site level includes age, gender, disaggregated population data, persons with disability data, and site risk data, which includes all of the important uh, aforementioned eviction data categories, um, which were featured in that template that I showed. So the data that is compiled by CCCM partners through both monthly service maps and through this biannual site verification is then deposited by HLP focal points into this interactive uh, eviction risk map that I will just show. Great, and this eviction risk map allows for us to have uh, a broad sense of the uh, eviction risk that exists both at the district level, but more importantly at the site level. And it provides uh, basically an interactive uh, ability to showcase this data that I mentioned, which is included uh, within this monthly service map and within the site verification as well. Um, so this is just a tool that can be used to really understand uh, the various risks of eviction that exist at the district level, but more importantly, at the site level throughout the country. Okay, so apart from collecting and showcasing important eviction data, CCCM partners are actively engaged in delivering conflict resolution, knowledge sharing activities that targets site governance structures or other important site level focal points. Um, so depending on the coverage of the HLP partner, uh, these trainings may be conducted with support of HLP partners, or they may be conducted independently with the CCCM partner uh, targeting managed uh, sites that have not received these types of trainings by HLP partners. Um, so the conflict resolution training module is one of six standard training modules that CCCM partners administer at the site level, uh, with trainings including a trainer's manual and a step-by-step -step guide for conducting the session, in addition to interactive activities for participants. Next, the HLP AOR with support from the protection CCCM and shelter clusters are in the process of finalizing a due diligence guide for Somalia. And um, this document intends to provide um, analysis and guidance for partners who intend to design and develop infrastructure in informal sites throughout the country, uh, while also providing support in situations where um, maybe uh, land purchases are intended, um, such as for uh, relocation schemes or providing land ownership to beneficiaries that are living in informal settlements and for beneficiaries who wish to remain in these informal settlements. Uh, and lastly, CCCM partners support in providing flash eviction alerts in situations where there is an absence of HLP partners with these flash alerts 
uh, detailing whether or not the eviction was a forced eviction, what are the pressing needs uh, of the displaced caseload, and other critical details that allow for a swift and comprehensive response to this particular uh, alert. Um, thank you very much. That's all from the cluster side. I will now hand it over to Elena, who will discuss uh, initiatives that are being spearheaded by ACTED. Over to you, Elena. Thanks, Ben. Okay, let me share my screen. One second. Um, I cannot share my screen for some reason. <laughs> I don't know if... Uh, shall, I, shall I share the presentation uh, from my side? Yeah, if you can. I don't know. I don't know why, but yeah, if you can, that would be great. Sorry. Yeah, that's fine. Right. Sorry for the inconvenience. No, no, that's fine. One second. Um, so I'll start introducing myself in the meantime. Yes, Elena, please. I work <laughs> I work for ACTED. Uh, I'm a program coordinator. I coordinate a project that is implemented in different uh, countries across the world, a CCM project, including Somalia. Um, so I want to talk uh, about some of the uh, initiatives that um, we took in, so in Somalia, and particularly in Argeza, Somaliland, at the field level, uh, to increase the cooperation between CCM and HLP. Um, so ACTED is a partner of the CCM cluster. We have uh, uh, ongoing CCM projects in different uh, districts uh, in, uh, in Somalia, including Somaliland. Uh, so we... Uh, uh, our teams have already benefited of uh, the different uh, initiatives that Ben uh, um, just presented to us. So the refresher training with the HLPUR, uh, we also contribute to the um, data collection uh, on uh, risk reduction monitoring through the standard tools. Um, so we uh, we are playing our part within the, uh, you know, the addiction uh, prevention and response uh, uh, activities in Somalia. Uh, but we also asked ourselves how we could uh, um, increase our cooperation with the HLP colleagues uh, at the field level. Uh, this is uh, a picture of uh, an informal IDP site in uh, Burao, a uh, district of, uh, of, Somalia, of Somaliland, and is one of the districts that has the highest uh, number of, uh, of displaced individuals in, uh, in the region. Um, so we ask ourselves how we could uh, uh, indeed increase this, uh, uh, this cooperation at the field level, and uh, we started. Uh, we decided to pilot uh, this, uh, you know, this increased dialogue from uh, from Somaliland. Uh, next slide. Thank you. And um, we decided to start our uh, increased um, um, cooperation with HLP from Somaliland for, for different reasons. So one is the displacement context, and already briefly um, described it to us. So Somaliland is in line with, uh, with the rest of Somalia. Uh, so we have recurrent shock uh, caused by drought, uh, floods, sometimes in some area, intercount conflicts. And we also have forced eviction, regular forced eviction that uh, cause uh, secondary displacement. Um, at the same time, uh, uh, the majority of the urban area across Somaliland, Swargeza, Burao, Berbera, uh, have received and are hosting a high number of IDPs and IDPs informal sites. Land is very valuable in, uh, in Somalia and in Somaliland. Uh, so this also increased uh, all the risks that are related to uh, lack of uh, stable land tenure. At the same time, uh, it, was always, it was often pointed out that uh, an unstable uh, land tenure uh, um, is a big obstacle uh, uh, to durable solution. Uh, this was, uh, um, you know, acknowledged uh, different times for Somali for Somaliland. In 2019, uh, the Regional Bold Durable Solution Secretariat had uh, um, uh, hosted a durable solution training in Algeza, and uh, you know, during this training, during the discussion, uh, there was a lot of. Um, uh, you know, discussion on uh, how the lack of land tenure uh, really prevents to have uh, uh, 
uh, you know, uh, talks and also planning surrounding durable solution and how this is one of the main obstacles to, um, to achieve sustainable durable solution in the area. Uh, and at the same time, it's one of the main needs as identified by the displaced population. Um, uh, the, um, the SRSG came to visit uh, Argeza in January 2020, 2020 and we facilitated uh, um, a site uh, visit, a site visit, a field visit to one of the uh, IDP urban sites in Argeza. And when the, um, the SRG was talking with the command management committees, what the command management committee representative said was that without stable land tenure agreement, we cannot you know, plan our future because we live under the constant threat of being evicted and we don't know if tomorrow will be here, if our shelter will be destroyed, if our uh, personal belonging will be all like, uh, you know, scattered around. Um, so there was, uh, uh, we thought that it was uh, quite a, a good, um, you know, a good uh, location where to pilot this increased uh, uh, cooperation. Um, and uh, the third aspect was related to humanitarian coordination. So the sectors are led by government agencies in Somaliland. Uh, and NDRA, so the National Displacement and Refugee Agency, co-leads uh, co the CCM, uh, the HLP, and the protection uh, sector. So we had a privileged, uh, you know, relationship also with uh, um, local authorities, uh, uh, and that was also built by several CCM training and workshops that acted organized between 2019 and 2020 uh, to kick off the CCM sector. So we had, you know, uh, quite a good uh, um, relationship with all the stakeholders, with HIV colleagues, with production colleagues, uh, with government agency and CCM partners uh, working in informal sites. Um, so we decided to, to, you know, kick off uh, this discussion with uh, um, the HLP. Um, uh, sector leads, so NDRA and, uh, and NRC, uh, and uh, um, we organized this uh, two, um, two days workshop on uh, HIV. Next slide. Uh, so uh, the, the workshop was jointly facilitated and organized by DACTA, the NRC, and the and Unit CR. Uh, so we, um, uh, we also jointly prepared the material for the workshop. The workshop uh, uh, lasted two days and took place in March. Um, we had 23 participants, uh, including uh, uh, you know, representatives from NGOs that are active in uh, um, uh, displacement sites across Somaliland, uh, but also representatives from the Ministry of Justice and NDRA. Uh, so um, uh, the agency took care of the uh, preparation of the workshop material, so ACTA took the lead on the um, modules and sessions that were uh, more uh, linked to CCM, including on displacement profiles, coordination information management, uh, HLP colleagues supported with uh, HLP related sessions. So we had sessions on uh, HLP dispute mechanism, on uh, international instruments and obligation on the protection risk faced by IDPs during unplanned relocation and post eviction. Uh, and we also had uh, um, uh, several group discussion uh, related to uh, prevention of, uh, um, of forced eviction, how we could do that, how we could cooperate and increase our referral uh, mechanism to flag any eviction uh, threat as soon as it's, it's arised, uh, as well as uh, risk connected to unplanned uh, um, relocation, because uh, it's a problem that we had in the past in Somaliland, so unplanned relocation uh, that uh, didn't involve the, uh, and, um, you know, uh, were not planned, it didn't involve the affected population, so uh, almost ended up in uh, de facto uh, eviction. We also had a presentation from uh, uh, NDRA on the Somaliland IDPs policy uh, and specifically to the provision that are contained in the IDP policies around forced eviction. Uh, and we also had a discussion in, uh, around the rule of law, so how we could create a conducive environment uh, um, according to which this, uh, this provision can also be regularly enforced. Uh, next slide. Can you see it yet? Uh, I can't, but, okay. <laughs> but basically it's just a, a picture that we took after the oh, workshop. Okay. 
Uh, oh no, sorry. Uh, these are yes, they wait for the opportunity. So at the end of the uh, of the workshop, we also compile some of the recommendation uh, that uh, um, uh, you know came up from participants. So one was uh, to continue increase dialogue and cooperation between CCM and HLP at the soon optional level. So continue to have this regular fora. Uh, also potentially organize them in other location across Somaliland that host a high number of IDPs. Um, but also keep an uh, open communication channel with the national level, should support be needed from their side. Um, obviously, strengthen the referral system of eviction track between partners operating in Somaliland, so also involving uh, partners that might operate in, in sites that are not covered and do not have a active, uh, an active CCM uh, um, uh, team uh, covering uh, management uh, services. Um, ensure proper consultation and planning is in place before any relocation occurs. Um, and uh, also a general uh, uh, recommendation on uh, organize similar workshop and, and promote similar engagement with senior other location in Somalia, uh, which is something we are planning to do from next year. And we are allocating budget to, uh, to have similar workshop also at the subnational level in other location, um, you know, under the umbrella of, uh, of the CCM cluster and uh, HLP um, national cluster. Um, and then a more like, uh, global one as a, as a um, as an organization as a coordinated project is implemented in different countries uh, uh, for sure we want to capitalize on this experience and uh, you know extend it uh, uh, further to other operation uh, as a as a best practice and uh, you know to go uh, especially for for those contexts uh, that uh, present uh, similar challenges related to forced eviction and this was a picture that was taken uh, during the the workshop at the end of the workshop and thank you um i also want to flag that uh, my colleague ali who is the SCM coordinator for acted in uh, in somalia is also joining uh, me in the call so if there will be questions uh, he can also support me in uh, uh, you know in answering them uh, uh, should there be very very context specific uh, is there uh, to have my back thank you hi ali Welcome, Ali. Um, and Jim, over to you. Thanks. So um, I think we'll um, move to hear from colleagues in uh, Iraq, and then we will um, uh, bring together uh, a time for questions after that. And please do add your questions or comments in the chat. Um, please do use that function. OK, so I'm just going to share the screen uh, for colleagues in Iraq. And if you would like to introduce yourselves and um, yeah, please take it away. Thanks very much, Jim. Um, I've been taking a lot of notes from that Somalia presentation. Um, to introduce ourselves, we are four people um, on the call, a nice inter-organization collaboration. Um, my name is Kate Holland. I am the CCCM cluster coordinator for Iraq. Um, I will hand to my colleagues to introduce themselves and then take you through what we will speak about. Um, Andrea? Yes, uh, good afternoon, everybody. Andrea Pagliato, CCCM Cluster Co-Coordinator with IOM in Iraq. <laughs> and Muslim and Marianne, I let you introduce yourselves. Okay, and then I will go. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Muslim Kazimi, HLP Subcluster Coordinator for Iraq and also Program Manager with UN Habitat Iraq. Over to you, Marianne. Hi everyone, and uh, I'm Marion, uh, working for Active in Iraq as a mobile CCCM project manager and uh, co-chair of the CCCM cluster at Ninawa level. Thanks. Jim, could we have the next slide, please? Um, so just to take you quickly through um, what we wanted to talk about, um, I will give a bit of an overview of um, displacement in Iraq um, and why we are interested in HLP issues, at least from the CCCM side. Uh, Muslim will talk about the collaboration between CCCM and HLP um, that started last year. Um, and then we'll hand to Marion to talk a little bit about the um, program experience of this um, and the implementation of this collaboration. Um, and then we'll come back together to talk about uh, some of the challenges we've been facing in Iraq um, and sort of ideas for the future, um, which I think now ideas for the future are strongly your base as well on what Somalia is doing. Um, 
Jim, if you could put the next slide. Uh, so the Iraq displacement context, just very quickly to set the scene, um, we have a mixture of formal camps and informal sites um, in Iraq. And we now have 29 formal camps left um, after a, a big push for closure from the government um, from the, the middle of last year until now. Um, because we have this distinction, the situation of families living in informal sites is sort of more precarious. Um, and of course, there are IDPs as well living in, in urban areas and in host communities. Um, for the informal sites, the typology varies quite considerably. Um, the majority of them are self-settled locations, so where families, when they were displaced, settled themselves. Um, and then we also have the dynamic as well, where their families are secondarily displaced. Um, there's a very big diversity in, in size and location. Um, so the largest informal site that we have still now um, is a collection of families living in unfinished buildings and about four and a half thousand people. Um, and then it goes down to sort of small self-settled sites in urban areas. Um, a mixture of shelter types as well, tents and makeshift settlements, the unfinished buildings, public buildings, we still have families um, who were displaced of 2014, 2017, still living in schools, for example. Um, and then it's a mixture as well of public and government owned uh, land and property, and then private, uh, private land, including with um, agricultural land and commercial land. So a huge diversity there um, in the types of locations. Um, some settlements, sort of small settlements in urban areas, some in sort of peri-urban and, and more rural areas. Definitionally in Iraq, the definition that we've been working on um, since 2015 is more than five displaced households living collectively, um, where the government hasn't resumed responsibility for the management. And that's a, an interesting definition here where they do have the recognition of the formal IDP sites. Um, there's also a strong emphasis in Iraq at the moment on the idea of displaced people returning to areas of origin, um, which is a dynamic that we clearly see in the camps that have been closed, um, but also has an implication on the types of work and the types of visibility where they're able to draw to the informal sites. Um, a note here, which sort of comes in when we are talking more about the durable solution side, is that the government of Iraq also has a definition of informal settlements and Muslim from your own habitat can expand on this if anyone is interested and where they take sort of the, the other end of the informal settlement definition being um, locations outside of urban master plans. Um, there's ongoing work with you and Habitat in sponsoring a law to regularize these settlements um, as around 13% of the Iraqi population live in these urban areas and, and well, urban and rural village areas that are outside of the urban master planning. So we see some intersection between what we understand as IDP displacement sites and these informal settlements in sort of an urban planning sense, um, which starts to really come together when we look at durable solutions, particularly in the, the larger informal site locations. Um, another point on, on this, we have sort of in some locations, multi-layered displacement over time where we might have families who were displaced in 2003 in the conflict who lived settled in an informal site got re-displaced in 2014 and have gone back to this location um, so there's a lot of dynamics there around how we are able to interact as humanitarian actors and what sort of we're looking toward for durable solutions um, two then key points um, there's a, a significant lack of government willingness to support families specifically living in informal sites they are um, tolerated at local level, um, but then we have a, a difficulty in that bringing too much attention to IDPs living in informal sites um, could increase the risk of eviction there. Um, with that, I will hand over to Midland to talk a bit about the, the CCMHLP collaboration. Thanks, Kate. Okay, we'll be very brief and uh, we'll just to, uh, walk you throughout how we started the collaboration. Initially, uh, uh, the collaboration uh, started, of course, uh, in Iraq, we have a very well established cluster uh, mechanisms and we do exchange a lot of coordination and information uh, between all the clusters. However, this came as a result of uh, practical issues uh, that we were facing in the field, particularly from CCCM uh, uh, partners. Uh, where there were many cases were happening, forced evictions in different governorates. And uh, when CCCM started to work on informal sites, we, they noticed that it's a quite a, a important issue that we should be addressing also HLP issues. Uh, in that regard, we initially, with uh, uh, another colleague, Marta, which I think she's here, 
uh, we uh, set up a kind of a Q&A live uh, uh, session with all the CCCM partners to hear practically the, what are the main problems and what are the main issues that they are facing. Uh, so we can better have a, we can have a better understanding on how uh, HLP subcluster could support the uh, CCCM clusters. Of course, uh, we had the very fruitful sessions. So they uh, presented all the issues, and we, as HLP subcluster, provided the uh, right answers on how we should address each and every one HLP issue uh, on uh, uh, always on CCCM, uh, let's say, perspective. Uh, main of the questions and uh, uh, Q&As were, let's say, uh, on how to address HLP issues, secondary occupation, and also how to resolve HLP issues. As you may know, in Iraq, uh, the HLP issues <clears throat> are quite high, and uh, often we came, we face where uh, we have communities, let's say like Yazidi minority, which never had any HLP documentation. And that became uh, quite a, uh, let's say, a, a problematic uh, issue for uh, CCM partners on how to intervene in their uh, in their uh, programs. And uh, after that, we agreed with Bart, Mart and CCM uh, coordinator that maybe it would be better if we could uh, organize or maybe uh, draft a Q&A guidance note which will remain in the future in case any of us will go on other missions. So we wanted to, to leave us some trace for the coming uh, coordinators to find a way on how to further develop or in, uh, let's say deepen our uh, the collaboration between HLP subcluster and CCM cluster. In that regard, we also offer that uh, uh, for the CCM partners, UN Habitat particularly, and also as a cluster together with some of our partners are uh, also willing, and we have also shared this interest to train CCM partners on HLP related issues, uh, practically in uh, Iraqi context. Uh, which was, I think, uh, one of the key points. And then we are now developing also this month uh, listing partners who are interested to do this. So trying to build some capacity. But what was the, the focus of the, uh, this guidance note? Of course, um, uh, as I said, it is was one of the key issues was HLP issues in informal sites, uh, trying to differentiate uh, from the informal settlements intervention and also uh, from HLP subcluster intervention, because there are two types of things. Uh, we as a HLP partner, as a, as a HLP subcluster, uh, we are limited on uh, our intervention, which means we are only uh, pro focusing on humanitarian response. While we have a UN Habitat who has its uh, uh, mandate, when I say UN Habitat, I'm also part of UN Habitat, where we have a specific mandate on how on uh, dealing with uh, informal settlements and informal sites, and we are working quite a lot with the government. We have submitted a law to the parliament in order to address uh, informal settlements issues, including HLP issues. Uh, we hope that soon will be uh, approved this law, and then we'll take it further. I think we'll make easy our life and work. Uh, to deal with these issues. And then we have also developed another guidelines, which is called due diligence guidelines on shelter, which practically that also it's focused more uh, on shelter issues, but that helps also CCM partners uh, to address HLP issues in their operation and how to do some kind of due diligence on, uh, uh, let's say, CCM uh, operations. Then also addressing uh, the issues of uh, threat of evictions. As you may know, we also have a uh, through this uh, guidance, we have set up a referral pathways on how to address when there are a, a threat of evictions, what are the communication channels, and how we react, uh, we as a CCM cluster, as HLP subcluster, and also how to involve partners uh, uh, working in that area to uh, provide response and uh, protect IDPs against threats of evictions or NHLP issues. And on the very last one, of course, uh, it was about the HLP risk and how to support IDPs more practically. And now we also have developed together with uh, uh, like ICCG or CCM and other clusters, also the response on the informal sites, which uh, Kate has done a brilliant job and also HLP inputs were provided on how to address HLP issues on that. I will stop here and pass to my colleague and uh, then later we can take the question. Over to you, thanks. Thank you, Muslim. Um, so yeah, I think you you covered pretty much the the whole point of the of the guidance note. So I'll I'll try to be brief as well, so everybody can ask their questions. But uh, more practically, uh, the reasons why CCCM actors reached out also to uh, the HLP subcluster was really to avoid duplication of work or 
just to make sure that each partner was just intervening within their scope of intervention to ensure the maximum impact. Um, as was mentioned by, uh, by Kate and Muslim, one of the biggest uh, HLP risks uh, faced in formal sites in Iraq is, uh, of course, the risks of evictions. Knowing that uh, within the law, uh, all these informal sites are by definition illegal. So um, there is very little that, uh, that can be done um, to, to ensure that these evictions cannot happen, except for um, advocacy, conducting advocacy. Would it be possible to have the previous slide, please? <laughs> Thank you. Um, yes, so um, basically one thing that uh, acted operationalized uh, was to integrate uh, legal officers in, uh, in its team with uh, people specialized uh, in the law, but still uh, leaving anything related to awareness to HLP partners. So one of the major action that, uh, that acted has taken as CCTM partner was basically to refer directly uh, the eviction risks to HLP partners, uh, especially when we were when we knew that the procedure was not uh, was not respected. Basically, if you don't get an official um, eviction note from from the municipality or the government, uh, you can still do something and conduct advocacy to to prevent this eviction from uh, from happening. So one of the biggest strengths of having this direct um, communication um, between CCCM and HLP was also to build the capacity of CCCM actors to understand more uh, what's at stake uh, in the laws in Iraq, just to make sure whether CCCM partners could go further in advocacy or leave it to the HLP partners. In case there is nothing that can be done to prevent the risk of eviction, then this mechanism of referral pathway through the HLP clusters uh, with uh, the CCCM protection uh, clusters and OCHA in copy would enable to actually have a channel of discussion to respond to this eviction and uh, think together on the next steps and how to address uh, potential resettlement or direct uh, response to support. Um, one example that we wanted to talk about uh, in uh, supporting this eviction risk and how like this um, how this open channel between uh, CCCM and HLP partners worked was uh, an eviction that was conducted illegally by um, by uh, Mukhtar, so local leader in uh, in Iraq, and not by the um, by the Directorate of Education uh, to whom the the land belonged. Uh, so basically, this school was at risk of eviction for like personal. Um, personal matters, let's say. Uh, and we just coordinated with the HLP uh, subcluster to understand what could be done. Um, since the municipality got involved, uh, like this conversation between the CCM partner and the HLP subcluster uh, just confirmed that uh, there was nothing that could be done for the eviction, but we had to trigger our own uh, mechanism of, uh, of eviction with uh, together with OCHA to try to speak to the municipality to um, to remove this risk uh, of eviction which was uh, which was stopped but um, overall this whole issue of uh, risk of eviction in Iraq is more symptomatic of like the bigger picture and the fact that in Iraq the um, government tries to let's say close the IDP question and really really pushes for for people to to go back to their areas of origin. That's why having this established uh, an open channel of communication between the two clusters uh, is also really good when we think of moderable solutions. By having this established, we know that moving forward, uh, HLP and uh, CCCM partners will be able to collaborate further, especially should the law um, uh, should the law sent to the government by the HLP uh, partners would be uh, would be adopted, then there would need a very much stronger coordination between the CCCM actors and HLP to deliver actually the the right uh, civic documentation for the for owning the land or anything uh, linked to legalization. 
I'm pretty sure I've covered the next slide as well, but uh, <laughs> could you please? Thank you. Um, yeah, I think I've covered uh, everything. Andrea, Kate, if you if you have anything else to add, maybe. We'll yeah. pass on to Ms. Lim for the. Oh, sorry, Andrea. Yeah, so we have some outstanding challenges at the moment in the operation. Uh, the most pressing is obviously the lack of funding for HLP. Unfortunately, soon only two uh, HLP partners will be operational in Iraq, meaning that. We won't have focal points for support in individual site cases and referral at governorate level. Um, and also a more philosophical question uh, on how to re-emphasize HLP as a priority in this phase of the operation, especially given that transition in Iraq uh, is going toward durable solutions. Um, there are also, though, uh, uh, hope and rooms for future, future collaboration. Uh, we can explore possibility for securing tenure right for specific informal sites, aiming to prevent forced evictions, e.g. rental agreements, and then more trainings on HLP. Uh, so we, we remain uh, engaged and connected. I don't know if Muslim, you have any uh, further comments on the challenges and future, future collaboration as you are on top of things uh, with the subcluster. Over. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Andrea. Yeah, uh, we'll be just brief. Uh, uh, as uh, my colleague Andrea mentioned, uh, soon uh, HLP subcluster will uh, run with only two partners. Uh, as of uh, July 2, 2021, uh, we'll be having only UN Habitat and NRC as a uh, main uh, HLP actors in Iraq. And of course, not covering all the war affected areas. We also had uh, in quite in many governorates, we had our HLP focal points uh, assigned by different HLP partners. But surprisingly, uh, IHF, Iraqi Humanitarian Fund, decided that not to provide, uh, let's say, more funds for HLP. And uh, it was uh, affecting very badly our uh, partners because most of our partners were relying on IHF funds in order to develop and implement HLP programs. Uh, however, we did not stop there. We tried uh, with, uh, uh, let's say, through protection cluster, uh, kindly Kate also support me on this supported me on this. Uh, we uh, try to do some kind of uh, adv high advocacy, high level advocacy with uh, within our UN family, let's say, and also in the cluster system to, to, to uh, raise the awareness of the importance of HLP. But uh, it's strange that we did not, uh, we were not uh, very well uh, understood. So they finally decided to remove uh, HLP component from IHF. And uh, by June, uh, we'll be remaining only with two partners. And that will have a huge impact on uh, our, uh, let's say, uh, provision of services to IDPs. And as Andrea said, uh, we are working towards durable solutions and uh, we are uh, hoping that uh, now we are developing uh, quite good mechanisms, but in the end, uh, the problem will, uh, the issue will be again, then who we are developing to, because there are no partners anymore. We are trying as an alternative solution to build capacity to local uh, authorities, to build capacity to other, uh, let's say, organizations who are not uh, HLP actors or, let's say, non-HLP actors, in order to, uh, to 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 know more about HLP and have some ideas about HLP, so at least they respect do not harm principles and avoid an HLP violation. This is the current situation, what we are doing now. However, uh, as uh, Marion said, uh, forced evictions are really becoming an, a major issue in war affected governorates. Uh, and that is due to a lot of uh, illegal or secondary occupation of public buildings, not residential buildings, but public buildings that people have to, uh, as an alternative to live in. And uh, after a while, government wants to clear up all the uh, uh, public buildings and forced evictions are occurring almost every day and every month. Over to you, Kate. Thanks. Um, I think back to, back to Jim. Thanks so much, um, uh, uh, Kate, uh, Marian, uh, Muslim and Andre. Um, and um, yes, um, really, and thank you to those colleagues in Somalia as well. Um, now, just to say we, you may have noticed in the, inv the meeting invites that um, I had broken rules of convention and actually this meeting is scheduled to last until quarter past the hour. So we actually have 25 minutes 
I appreciate some of you will need to leave probably on the hour, but we do have a bit of time now to move into the Q and A. So um, please, if you can stick with us, uh, then uh, then let's 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 do that. So um, in terms of the Q and A, um, you know we've had a couple of questions come in through uh, the chat, um, and uh, so I think. Oh, sorry, one second. Um, and um, so I'll, I'll start with those, and then if others want to speak or, um, or, or, or kind of share a question in the chat, then please do so. Um, so the original question uh, came from um, uh, Yasmin from a GPC. Uh, so to Somalia colleagues, interested to hear more on the impact of the conflict resolution trainings and whether there were linkages with community-based protection activities happening in Somalia. Uh, so yeah, if the Somalia team would like to respond to that one. Great. No, I can jump in. It's a great question. Um, so we, at the moment, we don't have conclusive evidence of the effectiveness of the conflict resolution training. We have fairly detailed evidence of uh, the various trainings that are conducted to camp management committees being effective and uh, being able to demonstrate leadership at the site level as seen from different households that are surveyed through satisfaction surveys at the site level. Um, I should also mention that within Somalia, there's been a, a fairly substantial decrease in evictions from 2018 to um, the present time. So for example, between 2019 and 20, there was a 35% reduction in eviction uh, incidents. And um, if we are basically going down the same trajectory for 2020, 2021, uh, it would be a 30% deduction as well. A lot of this is related to the eviction moratorium that was put in place in April 2020 in Southwest states. And that moratorium is based on um, basically COVID-19 and endorsed by the state level authorities in Southwest state, uh, which bars uh, forced evictions occurring in that particular region of Somalia. Uh, but in addition, there have been a number of task forces that have been created by uh, HLP, CCCM, protection partners that largely have local authorities spearheading these task forces. We've also seen an increase of local authorities that have uh, positions within their particular authority of HLP officers or individuals who are preventing or responding to eviction. Um, so therefore, th th there, are, there are a myriad of reasons for why we see this reduction. Um, but it is important to note that we are seeing a fairly substantial reduction in eviction incidents in Somalia and Somaliland. Back to you. Thanks, Ben. And um, another question just still on Somalia and then we'll move to the next question, uh, which is for both um, uh, sets of colleagues. Um, so on the Somalia presentation, this is from uh, Marco um, Rotuno. Um, how is the eviction risk level estimated? And could you please explain a bit more what are the due diligence standards? Thank you. Great. So the eviction risk threshold is basically divided into four categories, extreme, high, medium, and low. So for sites that have an extreme risk of eviction, these are sites where there is uh, a 10 year agreement that has already expired, or there is a planned eviction um, where a date is fixed. For high or high threat of eviction, uh, basically, these are situations where there's no agreement, there might be a monthly open ended verbal agreement, um, or there might be a 10 year uh, or, or agreement that is expiring in less than a year with a rejected renewal. Um, for medium, uh, basically, this is a situation in which the uh, agreement is expiring in, uh, in less than a year, there is a renewal that might be pending. Um, and for low, basically, these are short term leases, you know, maybe two to five years or potentially a long term lease of more than five years or in very, you know, in, in certain situations, permanent 10 year agreements that may have already been put into practice um, for the due diligence explanation. I mean, I, I would actually implore a potentially Muslim to chime in on this just because um, I believe that the due diligence document created for Somalia was largely impacted uh, based on what was created for Iraq. So perhaps it'd be more useful to hear Muslims uh, response on that. Yeah, please, Muslim, go ahead. Uh, thanks, uh, Jim. 
Uh, okay, so in the first question, just quickly, I mean, uh, what the uh, uh, HLP surplus and also our partners facing uh, the, the uh, risk level estimation, or I would say that uh, we, we face uh, two main issues uh, uh, in regard to informal settlements. This first is uh, uh, informal uh, agreements or verbal agreements for uh, renting the apartments. And as you know, most of the IDPs, uh, like 1.2 million, still reside in informal settlements. And this is one of the biggest challenges for us on how to address this and avoid uh, and protect uh, IDPs against forced eviction and also inability to pay rent. Uh, we have noticed that most of the uh, IDPs uh, are jobless and also they don't have uh, many opportunities and livelihood and as a result they are not able to pay rent on time and of course delays and often we see that the uh, uh, owners uh, usually threat them to evict them forcibly if they don't pay rent. In Iraq we have also a law on rent which also uh, it's uh, it really aims to protect the uh, uh, the owner and the rentee, but the problem is that with IDPs, it's a bit completely different context and that affect them because they usually don't formalize the agreement. And that's an issue that we are working together with uh, uh, our partners on how to address. COVID-19 has uh, showed that uh, the, most of the IDPs were vulnerable under these categories. On uh, the standards of uh, due diligence, uh, okay, when we drafted this uh, uh, guidelines, uh, we wanted to make sure that uh, initially, as I said, it was uh, uh, drafted for uh, shelter partners uh, in order to uh, to understand the HLP. But what were main issues on how to set up the standards? I think was uh, the the one of the top issues was on how to. Uh, to understand the HLP issues in the community. And uh, in that regard, we had developed around 14 questions on how uh, non-HLP partners or anyone who does not have any uh, background on HLP to understand the HLP issues in the community. And I would say that in Iraq, a governorate to governorate differs the context of HLP issues. And you might wonder why, but it's maybe another topic we could discuss. So we have developed a uh, kind of uh, questions on how to do the first uh, uh, the HLP concerns in the community. And also the second would be how to engage with the local authorities on HLP related issues and also shelter activities because local leaders uh, in uh, uh, Iraq, in the governorate, in the district level, are quite impactful and very, uh, let's say, powerful. So uh, collaborating with them, it's a, something that we have a guide our partners, uh, deeply engage with them in order to have a successful implementation of uh, shelter uh, operations and also to address HLP issues. Assessment was also another, uh, let's say, one of the first uh, standards we have asked them to do uh, on HLP in order to uh, address or uh, mitigate the measure issues that may arise during the implementation. Raising awareness on, in the community on HLP is something that also we strongly suggested because many of the IDPs, many of the Iraqi residents do not have ownership documentation. They also somehow, it's a kind of, a, let's say, a, a standard which they disregard the uh, ownership or the title, official title. You will find cases where you will find the entire village is registered on behalf of one person of the community leader. And that created a lot of problems uh, for the partners on, in order to address the HLP issue. So we, we asked them to do awareness raising in order to, to so the uh, IDPs and the beneficiaries can resolve the HLP issues or the title or ownership, and then to continue with the, uh, with the activities. Missing, destroyed uh, of HLP documentation is something that we have highlighted everywhere in every level. Uh, in Iraq is heavily impacted because ISIL has destroyed most of their uh, records and that had huge impact on, on the partners on how to address the HLP issues. Alternatively, we have been working with the government, with Baghdad, uh, with the uh, uh, central level to restore uh, the ownership documentation, which uh, luckily they have took a copy of them. And uh, I think now, by now, as we speak, uh, they managed to restore more than 85% of the property records. Compensation is a hot topic in Iraq, and it's in every level. Uh, any partner who wants to do any intervention, despite the CCCM, livelihood, uh, shelter, Compensation is something that has to be aware of every part in Iraq. Accordingly, we have developed two guidelines. One is HLP, uh, it's a compensation property uh, compensation guidelines, and also another uh, uh, advocacy note or uh, 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 
kind of uh, advocacy note which highlights the main HLP issues and how government should address these HLP uh, compensation issues in order to resolve uh, the problems and how to overcome the, the challenges. All are online. I will share with you the link if you want to access you maybe. That was helpful because uh, uh, any person who do any work in Iraq or in, including sh shelter rehabilitation, uh, also any, any kind of work, if they don't prove the, the damages occurred during the war, they will miss the compensation and they will not be entitled to compensation. So we wanted partners to address the compensation and ask uh, our beneficiaries to submit the claims for, pro for property compensation to compensation committee prior to doing any rehabilitation work or anything. And the same was applied also for uh, CCCM actors. And on that regard, we have also uh, uh, made another set of lists, uh, some short briefings, and also, uh, let's say, questionnaires, and also, uh, uh, how do we say, uh, maybe a waiver for the for the beneficiaries in case they are not interested to file compensation claim in order to protect our partners that if someone wants to do any rehabilitation or any work in their uh, area and they don't want to do any uh, submission of the claim they have to sign a waiver so not to blame or to accuse the uh, partners uh, that they did not award them so one of the uh, 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 activities we have asked our partners is to do our ones raising also in compensation. I hope that uh, addressed the uh, uh, your question, but also I have also another set of lists about HLP do very do document verification, but I don't want to go to that level. Over to you, Jim. Thanks, Muslim. That's great. Really helpful too. And thanks, Ben, as well. Um, yeah, if you, anyone wants to share resources that that they have that are relevant to these questions and these discussions, please put them in the chat. And just to emphasize that one of the, the reasons this, this conversation is happening is because we had that initial call out to develop this repository, this library of resources, and we've been gathering those uh, different resources from your, yourselves and colleagues working in different countries uh, to try and draw on these examples so that we can uh, learn from these things. And just to mention as well, um, the compensation that uh, Muslim mentioned, that's something that the HLP AOR will be um, sort of ho holding some further workshops around because it's an issue that is affecting so many uh, different situations. And um, yeah, and, and one of the things uh, Muslim may have mentioned, but I don't think he did, was that they thought long and hard about how to communicate the um, guidelines around the compensation. So they not only had the technical guidance and, and documents, but they also had a very kind of easy to follow step by step guide for those who wanted to access compensation, uh, which is a really important part of, of all of this work as well, of course. Um, so, yeah, thank you. Yes, if I may just uh, react quickly. Uh, yeah. Yes, as you mentioned, we have dev we have developed uh, three types of uh, compensation guidelines. One is for the partners. The other one is uh, for the beneficiaries and together with IOM also we have uh, developed posters and also brochures uh, for, for people who are uh, illiterate also with uh, let's say cartoons on how to file compensation claims and how to seek legal assistance for the compensation. And in the very last one, we also done uh, another guideline for the government authorities on how to simplify the procedures and in regard to the compensation uh, 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 let's say uh, uh, mechanisms in that regard we have also do to have the, achieved two major uh, achievements once we have uh, uh, revised the law and we have now a new law which has been amended mm -hmm. and the very uh, last one last week we have drafted and submitted to the government the bylaw of the uh, amended law which really will simplify the process and the procedures on, on filing the compensation claim Including that, we have managed also to, to have a property a separate property uh, compensation by law because in, previously we had the general one which has a lot of categories in Iraq entitled for compensation, but we have managed to have a separate uh, property compensation by law and that will help partners a lot. Over to you. Thanks, Muslim. Yes, and um, let's. I'm just going to move on to the next question. We've probably got about another. A few a few more questions we can go through so please do if you want to ask something either uh, raise a hand and i'll try and spot it but if i don't do put it in the chat so a question from emmanuel gay was um to both uh, teams somalia and iraq uh, any good examples of advocacy to uh, access land so um 
So in the chat, one of the points was maybe this should be the responsibility for the whole humanitarian uh, community. And I think, Emmanuel, you mentioned that in Burkina Faso, where you are, that's the main issue. Great to hear examples of how other operations have dealt with this. So advocacy around access to land. Have you had experience of that? Ben, I believe you said you had a, an example from Somalia. Yeah, thank you. Good question. Um, we have a practical example um, of a relocation project uh, that pretty much came through advocacy and joint ownership or joint understanding of the threats of eviction that occur within a particular location. Um, so this particular project occurred in Baidoa and through the site verification exercise that I mentioned, which allows for local authorities to participate in verifying functional IDP sites within the districts. Um, there was a concrete understanding that um, various IDP sites within Baidoa had a extreme threat of eviction. Um, and through working with the government, through ensuring that the local authorities were aware of this, this extreme threat and physically being present in these sites, speaking to landowners, speaking to site leaders as well, um, there, there was a, a real big push to create a, um, a relocation scheme or to at least uh, secure land in a location where individuals from that site could be relocated and over uh, a period of, of, of years receive land titles for that particular um, demarcated plot of land that they would relocate to. Um, so this occurred within Somalia in this location called Baidoa. It's called the Barako Relocation um, Project or Activity. Um, and as, as Juan mentioned, I mean, it was a very effective initiative. Uh, currently, the IOM, the CCCM partner, and one of the, the big partners who's sort of supporting the government in this particular scheme recently completed the second phase of this relocation. And it was really successful because we were able to receive buy-in from a number of sectors. Um, obviously, with a relocation project, there's a need to ensure that we have support from WASH, from health, from nutrition, from some of the other sectors, in addition to durable solution partners as well. Um, but I, I should underline this important point. This project was able to be successful because local authorities in Baidoa were fully aware of this eviction threats. They were aware that individuals who may be forced out of those settlements would probably relocate to other locations where there's vacant land or to other IDP sites. Um, and the local authorities in this particular region really wanted to come up with a permanent solution to um, this perennial issue of, of forceful eviction and then IDPs going to other um, you know, secondary sites or, or vacant land. And this sort of um, cyclical process continuing to occur within this particular location. Um, so this this Barocco relocation project has been used as a model. There are currently uh, a few relocation projects that are occurring um, elsewhere within Somalia, where again, um, partners are looking to bring in local authorities to do these types of site verification exercises to identify some of the most at-risk sites, both when it comes to eviction, but also when it comes to flood risk as well, and to see if it's possible to come up with uh, voluntary relocation schemes of IDPs living precariously in these types of IDP sites. Over to you. Thanks, Ben. And um, that's, uh, yeah, thanks. That's a really good example. And also touches on a question that just came in about involving local authorities and local NGOs in preventing the risk of evictions um, and advocating Jim? for, yes. Uh, sorry, it's Muslim. Maybe just yes. for the sake, I know I speak a lot, sorry. Uh, You've got a lot to say. Of, uh, the, of the people here, maybe uh, to share my example of the program I'm managing uh, in Iraq on access to land. Yeah, uh, maybe fine. it's interesting to, to show a successful story how UN Habitat is uh, yeah. uh, uh, granting access uh, to land to Yazidi minority. Okay, we'll be very quick. Sorry for uh, maybe speaking That's too much. Good. But uh, in Iraq, as you may know, we have a, a minority called Yazidi, which has been discriminated, let's say, for almost 300 years, never given any access to the land. Despite the fact that uh, during Saddam's regime, Yazidi minority was relocated forcibly from their uh, 
original location, which called the mountain of Sinjar, and brought them to the collective townships forcibly. Uh, uh, they, they, he destroyed the uh, uh, old uh, heritage in Sinjar Mountain, their houses and everything that belonged to them and brought them completely to the new uh, villages or townships. And despite that, he brought them forcibly. He, he never granted any uh, uh, documentation to secure their tenure rights. Uh, although it was for continuing for 50 years after the fall of uh, Saddam's regime, we were expecting that the government would address uh, Yazidi's case. And in that regard, the discrimination continued uh, until a UN Habitat has uh, raised this issue with the government authorities and uh, started to implement a project which basically uh, it uh, aims to register the housing land and property claims of Yazidi minority in the collective townships. In collaboration with GLTN, we have uh, used the STDM mode, uh, uh, tool, which is thanks, uh, let's say, uh, uh, social tenure domain model. It's a tool where, which uh, aims to register, recognize, and record and archive the documentation of Yazidi uh, minority. We have managed almost 95% of all the collective townships to register all the claims of Yazidi. Mm -hmm. We have uh, uh, also issued occupancy certificates, which are endorsed now by the government and approved as a, let's say, first level of uh, tenure uh, documentation. In that regard, we have made sure also to have inclusion of gender balance, where we have registered uh, wife and husband as co-owners mm -hmm. for the first time in Iraq. Now, all the Yazidis have registered their ownership rights, including the family members, uh, daughter and sons, to be as an owner of the property. Uh, not stopping in this, in this level, we have also uh, uh, done a lot of advocacy internationally and locally, and also with high uh, officials and federal authorities in Iraq, to jointly draft a legal decree to officially recognize Yazidis property rights and uh, also transfer the occupancy certificates has been, that has been issued by UN Habitat into full ownership. Uh, the government has reviewed the uh, legal decree. It is in process of endorsement. And very soon, uh, the, thanks to our work, Yazidis for the first time will have officially uh, uh, registered their uh, land rights in Iraq. Thanks, Muslims. Yeah, I'll just jump in just because of the time, but thanks so much. And I've put a link in the chat of a, a fairly recent report, I think just last month around about that work. Um, so thank you for that. And I'm sure there are other things that could be uh, shared. Um, now, sadly, we've run out of time to take any more questions just now, but there are a couple of questions in the chat. So I wonder if the presenters, if they're able to have a look at those and maybe uh, respond. Uh, there's, uh, yeah, there's a couple of questions there that it would be great to um, be able to respond to, but we will collect the questions and hopefully have an opportunity to engage with those issues at some point. Um, just wanted to finish really with um, some kind of closing sort of remarks about next steps because as uh, Juan and myself were saying earlier, uh, this working group, it, it's a, a place to share information, to learn from one another and to um, uh, create a space where we can share our challenges and some of the solutions and the uh, successes as well. Uh, and, and one of the things we're doing, as has been mentioned, is collecting together these uh, resources and um, uh, trying to build up a repository. We have a number of countries that have uh, submitted examples, but I just want to uh, welcome you to uh, submit any other uh, resources or examples of, of uh, cases or projects where HLP and CCCM uh, either have been working together, actors on that, or where HLP issues have been looked at. Um, that would be great. Um, Juan, did you want to uh, just, yeah, sort of uh, address some of the closing remarks, or I can trot through them if you like? No, I mean, feel free. Maybe I, I just share that... Um, we're planning our global CCCM meeting in the week of the 21st of June, so 21st to 25th of June. And we're hoping also to host um, a session related to HLP issues, potentially with focus also on, on gender and, and HLP, right, Jim? Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll leave you to, um, to the rest. Sure, thanks. Yeah, so yeah, another uh, session of this group around that potentially looking at gender, which the HLP AOR is doing a, a number of things on around sort of June time. So do look out for those things. Um, 
on this repository gathering resources together i suppose as well as asking for the resources we're also interested to have your involvement in helping you know cur curate and discuss how we manage this thing so we're thinking about hosting it on the hlpor webpage on the cccm cluster pages but we need to work out the best way to do that so we really want this to be a participatory group and um it, you know fantastic to here today what we have but we'd love your involvement so please do either in the messages or reach out to us individually if you would like to support that process and um, that would be great because we need your your help with that um a couple of other things just to mention quickly um, we have uh, a colleague is will be reviewing the um, resources that have come come in and with with the idea that we will see what are the uh, the range of resources we have for CCCM actors and colleagues on HLP issues and then identify any gaps that might be there and then begin to plan how we address those gaps, how we pull together a toolkit, how we bring together uh, some uh, new resources that we can all draw on. So I think today has been a really good example of where we can each hear the examples of what other people have tried and, and know that there are things there that we can try and learn from um, as well as uh, uh, yeah, share our own experiences. Um, one final other thing to mention, uh, there's the HLP AOR global meeting is on the 5th of May. If you haven't received an invite from for that and or would like to be there please do um just again let me know uh either in the chat or um or or any other way um i will just briefly um uh put my email in the chat as well and um uh yes i don't think there was anything else uh to say at this point was there one no i think just to say that there's been a few ask for the presentations um, so we'll happily um, share those as well as the recording of the session today as well. Yes, and I think that's, yeah, yeah, brilliant. And thanks so much for all your interest. Thank you so much for the uh, colleagues, uh, uh, Ben and Elena in uh, Somalia, to uh, Kate, Muslim, Andrea, Marion in Iraq. And thank you for all your questions and engagement. And um, yes, please do uh, let us know how you can be involved and how you would like to. Uh, and um, that would be, yeah, fantastic. Yeah, I'll put the link in the chat for the 5th of May AOR meeting, as you've asked uh, Charlotte. So just give me one moment. Uh, but other than that, thanks so much and uh, see you again soon. Thank you. Bye.